What up? How you guys doing? It's early here and I'm going to be building a game in just JavaScript today. It shouldn't take too long, but it's going to be fun because we're not using any frameworks. <clears throat> I'm pretty excited about this. I have like a rough idea of kind of how I want it to end up. <coughs> but, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. So the basic idea is can't use any libraries, cannot use React, um, only HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we're going to do it all in Code Sandbox. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, if you guys like what you see, um, you can uh, go check out my Patreon. <clears throat> Fun little side gig I'm doing. I'm doing videos and uh, doing open source software. Got a lot of cool projects on GitHub that a lot of people use. Um, <clears throat> I offer support for special support for people who are my patrons for my open source stuff. Um, and, you know, obviously just regular little uh, Patreon donations help me uh, find the time to make these videos. So go check it out, patreon.com slash Tanner Lindsley. And uh, let's, let's get into it. So the idea for my game is that I, I want this. Um, I'm actually building this game so I can teach my youth group tonight. I, I uh, am a leader in a youth group in my local church. Um, it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and uh, I got about 15 kids who are going to learn how to code uh, who might be interested in coding after this. So i got to make it fun enough that like, they'll enjoy building it and playing it, but not too hard that it's going to like, you know, be too much and blow their minds. <clears throat> so that's kind of the reason for my goal. What I want is I want a game... Uh, that just has one input, the space bar. So when you hit the space bar, it's going to start and stop this game. And I think it's going to be kind of like a brick stacker game, but just with a line that you're trying to hit the top of the screen, it'll get like faster and faster as you go. <clears throat> See how far you can get type of thing. Um, so out of the gate, uh, let's just hurry and design like the really crude graphics for this game. Um, Let's dive into uh, let's dive into some coding. Okay, so I don't know why Code Sandbox is highlighting this on, in yellow. It really bugs me, <clears throat> but bear with me on that. So the first things first is I know we're gonna have like a number to debug, um, like, and I know we're going to have let's just call it num. I know we're also going to have a line, so I'll make a div for that. And then I know we're going to have a score. <clears throat> Those are the only three things I can think of that are actually going to be on there right now. The number, the line, the score, and the number's probably not even going to need to be there. Um, so I think with those three elements, we should be able to do, and the body, of course, we should be able to do some, some damage. So got a style sheet here we gotta like uh, reset some stuff so um, HTML and body should not have any margin or anything like that so no margin no padding <clears throat> um, I want it to be a black background just because it's you know games are cool with their black background um, and I want to make sure that they're like width is at 100% and height is at 100%. Um, let's see. Body. So I want, oh, we're just going to start off with like a number in the middle of the screen so that we can debug. We're not going to worry about like really intense graphics just yet. So I'm going to make the body be um, 100%, well it already is 100% width and height, so we'll do display flex, um, align items, center, justify content, center. And that'll make it so the text that we display in the body is just all centered all the time. Uh, just an easy way to do that. 
So why don't why don't we put some debug stuff in our num? Let's just put like sixty five or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so we have this num element, and I know I want all the text in here to be white. So let's just do color white, uh, font, family. Um, let's see, don't they have a Helvetica? Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. Yeah, okay. Num. Let's see, num. I want the font size of num. We're going to do use view heights here. So, like, however tall the page is, we're going to say, like, view 30 view height, which should, like, scale with the size of our window. <clears throat> and then uh, that, that should be good enough for now. Um... Let's just go on from there. Let's get into some of the JavaScript. So blank JavaScript file here. Um, so a couple of things we're probably going to want to do. Like we want to hook up to our UI. So I know we're going to have like some document dot get element by ID stuff in here. So if I need to get that num from there, it'll be num. I'm also going to need to get the score, but we won't worry about that for now. Let's just do, let's just do num. So we've got this number thing. Let's log it out, make sure that we're hooked up right. Okay, sweet. So we got this number, and we will. Um, let's see, we're going to need some input too. So. Like, I know we're going to need a document, or no, we're going to need a window add event listener. Uh, we're going to do like key down. It's just going to be any key, really. Any key is going to trigger this thing, and um, it's going to be like on key down. And then we'll make a function called on key down. Sweet console log on key down um, let's see save reload on key down sweet <clears throat> by the way if you guys have any questions through this make sure you ask in the uh, chat up there I can try and walk you through um, there's any questions that you guys have so we have this on key down function um, but we need to create kind of like a loop thing. So when this on key down function gets hit the first time, we're gonna like start it. So I don't know why it imported that thing anyway. And we'll make a function called start. Console log started. So on key down is gonna start. So what we need to do here, I think, is um, we, we have to create some type of a game loop. So every single game, at least that I've built or played or looked at, like everything runs on a game loop. And normally they run at 60 frames per second or you know how faster, however they can. Just depends how much work you need to do within like each frame. But I think just for like simplicity's sake, I'm not gonna try and do everything at 60 frames per second. I'm just gonna use like set timeouts we're going to be really naive about this. So <clears throat> let's say we have the loop right here that's always running. And at the end of the loop, we're going to uh, do a set timeout. And we're going to call the loop again. But we're going to call it, um, we're going to delay it by the speed. So let's do, let's let speed equal. Um, 50 and then when we hit the start we're going to just kick off the loop and every time that it loops we're going to log hello no in fact instead of logging we're going to say num inner html equals math dot random just like that <clears throat> so when we click on key down, it should hit start, loop. Why don't we just get rid of that and just say loop. Um, 
So it'll say num inner HTML equals math random, set timeout, it will call loop again at our speed, which is 50. Okay, let's not do that without, we'll do math uh, round. <laughs> I guess we could do round or seal or floor. <clears throat> oh, and then we gotta do math random times like 100 or something. Okay, so we got this random number going crazy. Um, and that's nice. But what I really want is like, you know, the brick stacker kind of goes left and right and bounces back and forth. I want the same thing, but going up and down. Um, so instead of doing a random number, let's add, let's say current number equals zero. Let's make a new variable. And in the loop, we're going to say, um, so if the current, we're going to do between zero and hundred. So we're going to say if the current number equals a hundred, um, we have to like, change the direction. So we'll say like going up. We'll, we'll have a variable called going up and we'll say false. And then we'll say else if current number equals zero, going up equals true. So that way it will flip flop between the two. And let's do let going up equals uh, true out of the gate. When, let's see, going up. Going up is assigned to value, but never used. Well, that's not true. Um, so going up equals true. It's then right here in our loop, we'll say, um, if we're going up, then we're going to take the current number and we're going to plus equal one. Otherwise, we're going to take the current number and minus equal one. And then we're going to do our current number here instead of, let's see. There we go. All right, so it's counting up, going from 0 to 100, and it should hit 100 and come back down and hit 0. Sweet. Um, so this loop is awesome. So what if we wanted to start, and we have to be able to start and stop the loop. Um, there's a couple of ways we could do that. So why don't we do this? We're going to have a variable called running. Um, we're gonna start it off as false. And um, when we push the key, we wanna invert running. So we'll say running equals not running right? And then we're going to kick off the loop. Now, in the loop, we only want to do this stuff if it's actually running. Uh, so we'll say if running, we're going to be doing all this incrementing stuff inside of here. And then we're also going to not trigger the loop again unless we're running. So if we're running, we're going to trigger this loop again. It's okay if the set timeout runs. Um, so now when we tap our key, it'll start and stop. Should hit 100 and come back down. The direction should stay the same. Sweet. And then, okay, so we have it running. We can start and stop it. Um, Really what we need to do is introduce some type of a, like a scoring system now. Um, so before we do that, I think it's going to be easier if we can get like a tie this number into our line now, because it's, for me, it's kind of hard to like, okay, I'm going to stop this when it hits 100. It gets, you know, it seems like it's a little difficult to do that without actually like having a visual cue. So let's come up here and let's bring in our line. So now we have this like we have this line object, and let's go and uh, like get our line to show up. So our line, at least in my mockups, I just have it like uh, ten pixels tall, goes across the entire page. 
So um, it's going to be position absolute so that we can move it around on the page freely. Uh, in my mockups, I have it set to 10 pixels with a 100% width. Uh, the background is white and it's going to start at the bottom of the page, right? But we need it, so I want it to happen when it hits the top of the page, so when it's at 100%, like we're going to be interpolating, changing this value right here, the bottom value, with this number. But when it's at 100%, you can't see it. So I put this transform translate y, and I translate it 10 pixels down. Actually, you could even just do 100%, which would be 100% of the height of the line. So that way we could actually change the width of the line. Um, and it would always be the same. Um, I also, okay, let's see, my mockup, uh, that's everything I had in my mockup. So, okay, so we need to tie this number into that line. Um, tying that num tying the number into this line, we're going to have to write to the style property of this line object. So if we do line.style.bottom equals current number, and then we add on a percentage after it. Boom. We can start and stop it. Uh, that, and that speed is a little slow for me, so I'm going to start it at like 35 milliseconds between the delay. And the whole idea is we'll speed this up as things go on, right? Okay, so. Um, so when I stop the line, like my idea was that when you stop the line, it'll be like, oh, I got close to 100 or I didn't. But then when you start it again, it will start from zero. So um, I think I want to do that in this on key down function. So what we'll do right here is we'll say um, if running, so like we've already flipped running, right? So if we're now running again, uh, before we do the loop, I want to change the current number to zero. And that's going to reset it. So when we stop on 27 and restart it, it's always going to start from zero and go up. So even if we get 99, it starts again. Um, <clears throat> and then, so that resets it every time. And then we need to be able to start the game. Or sorry, we need to be able to score it as well, which also happens on key down. So on key down, um, if we're running, we're going to reset it. If we're not running, it means we just stopped it and we want to um, we want to take the account number and apply some score. So or it's the account number, the current number. Um, so if we take the current number, like we could come up with a scoring system, and like I had this idea where if you get 100, you should be rewarded for getting 100. If you get 99, I feel like that it's, it's probably pretty easy to get 99. Maybe not. But if you get 99 or maybe 98, nothing happens and like you, it stays the same. But then if you get below 99, it will like... Um, it will like take away some life. And in my mock-ups, I was building this and I was like, oh, well, I need a life bar, you know, some type of a life bar. What am I going to use? And I was like, oh, well, I have this white line that's going up and down. Like technically that could be the life bar. Um, and it could just shrink a little bit every single time. Uh, like if your life goes down, that white bar will shrink. So um, I have a really cool idea to implement that. Like if you go into the styles, I want to do uh, margin zero auto. So that way the white line will always be, um, it's always going to be in the middle of the page basically. Um, so if we were to do width 50, it should be 50 in the middle. 
<clears throat> and then to like give it a little bit of animation, uh, we can do transition just on the width, 0.3 or 0.2 seconds ease. So that way when you change it to like 20% width, well, we're gonna have to do it with JavaScript because it's hot reloading that. So let's do that. Um, so we're gonna, we have this variable, we're gonna do life and we're gonna just start it at 100. Um, and down here in our loop, we need to make sure that we are uh, setting the line style width to be our life plus percentage. So as if we ever change the life variable, it's going to update in our loop um, all the time, right? So if we have our life and on our key down, this is where we're going to be doing our logic where uh, we can decide what should we do when it stops, right? So we can say, you know what, if the current number, if the current number is less than 99, we're going to take away some life. So we're going to say life equals life minus, and like, I feel like it'd take a while to die if, uh, if you were just taking off one point every time. So I wanted to take however far off they are from 99 is how much I want to take away. So current number minus 99. And actually you want it to go even faster. So I'll put a, I'll just double that. So if you get 98, you'll be one off so it will minus two from your life. So let's just try that out. So if we get 70 or 80, if current number is less than 99, life equals that. Line style width, life percentage. I mean, that should be working. Maybe we need to reload. Hmm. Life equals 100 minus, so the current number, oh, it would be 99 minus the current number. Because if the current number was 98, it would give us a positive number. Okay. So now if we get 70, no, why is it still not working? 99 minus the current number. There we go. Cool. So I mean, it's it's uh, it's not very forgiving, right? You have to get pretty close to 100, but I mean, it's easy to do. Like if we get almost all the way to the top, 99, it doesn't do anything. Um, and I wanna handle that use case where if the current number equals 100 exactly, like we should reward them. So it'd be like life plus equals 10, like we can give them 10 points back. Um, Except for I don't want it to ever go above 100, so I'm going to do math min. And we'll say life plus 10, but it should never go above 100. And you know what? Same thing over here. Like, I never want it to go below 0, so I'll do math max and set 0 at the end of it. So that way, even if I get 100 right here, it will never go above 100% life, right? Um, and then, so, and then if it gets 99, if I get 99, nothing really happens, uh, which is kind of nice. So, oh, the other thing too is I, I wanted to, I wanted to let them know that. So, like, if they get 100, I wanted to like flash green, and if they get 99, I wanted to flash red. So. Uh, and we can do that with the body background, I believe. So when we're updating all of our stuff right here, uh, we can say um, if we're not running, so because if we're running, we want it to be black. So we'll do, let's bring in our body. Um, we'll just say const body equals document dot body. 
So when we're running, we can say body style background equals black. And then if we're not running, we can say um, if, let's see, we'll say if the current number equals 100, we're going to set the body style background to uh, like green. Else if, I just realized that this is also going to be an else if up here. And then we'll do, so we'll do else if the current number is less than 99, we're going to set the body style background to red. Um, and then if it's running, it will always go back to black. So when we start, if we get below 99, it should turn it to red, right? And then it restarts. And if we get 100, ugh, come on, it should turn green. You watch me play my, yes, okay. Okay, so you just, uh, you just noticed something strange. We got 99, but it still showed green. Um, now the problem here is that we, it was on 100 when we stopped it, right? But we incremented the number when we weren't supposed to. So let's see, if we're running, current number equals 100. If current number equals 100. If we're not, so we aren't running and the current number should equal 100. So I don't know how we got, okay, so there's 100, which is light green, which I liked it better, it's just green. Okay, so we got 99 and it wasn't, it was still black. And you know what, if we get 99, um, if we get 99, I kind of want to do like just a blue, right? So it's kind of like, hey, you're safe. Cool. Or we could invert it. We could have this be green, and then when you get blue, it's kind of like this special awesome thing. Um, so now we have like the colors set up to help people, you know, like, oh, I got a, I got a crappy score, so my, my bar went down. But see, that was weird right there. It flashed black. Is it possibly just because we're in Code Sandbox doing, yeah. It's because we're so Code Sandbox is doing hot reloading and it's it's registering my uh, it's registering my keyboard events multiple times. So if you're doing this along with me, it's important to reload your Code Sandbox browser every now and then. Also, I don't like how that white bar starts at the top, and that's just because we were messing around with that. So we'll do it at the bottom. <clears throat> and I feel like we can get rid of this number now. So I'm just going to do display none for now. Actually, you know what? No. This is what we're going to do. We are going to have some emojis. Oh, see, so see what happened here? If we run out of life and we start again, we can't keep playing. So that's the next thing we need to do. Um, basically what we need to do is if we're running, uh, if we start running, um, let's see, well, I'm looking at my notes here for how I wanted this to work. So if we are out of life, if there's no life, we want to like reset everything basically. Um, so let's just call a reset function. 
and I'm just going to do function reset. And you know what? I think I'm going to move all this stuff into the reset and just get rid of the let, and then we can get rid of all these right here. So, and then we call we can call reset right from the beginning. So it's like, hey, add the event listener and then reset. So if we click and we stop and we have no life, when we click again, it will give us life back to start again. Oh, we died. But when we die, I also want to show like, uh, so my, my design had like a skull and crossbones, right? So right here, I want to say um, if, there's, if there's no life, you know what, let's just keep the number in there. I kind of like it. So if there's life, we'll put the current number in there. But if there's no life, we're going to set num inner HTML to uh, an emoji. We'll just use the death symbol here. So we run out of life, we'll get the death, the death symbol. If we get 100, uh, see, it says 100 and we got blue again. We're going to have to debug this, but I think we're going to save that till the end. So our death is working good. And we can start over. It resets everything. Um, we need to keep score now. So, like, I think uh, I just want to call them levels. Like, what level did you get to type of thing, right? And I want to start that level at, uh, at 1. So, like, hey, you're on level 1. Congratulations. Everybody can get to level 1. And then um, on key down, uh, it really it's if they're uh, when they stop is when we want to determine their level. So like this is if they stopped. They stopped, started, right? I guess that's pretty apparent anyway. So right here, I want to say, like, if they still have life after they've stopped, technically their level should go up one. And then right here, we want to um, we want to have that level be updated right here. So we're going to have score. Like, let's bring in our score element. And it'll be score inner HTML equals level, and then we'll do the actual level. Whoa. So level is next to that, but that's not what I wanted. In my mockups, level is just at the bottom of the page. So let's come over here and let's do level, position, absolute bottom, zero, width, 100%, display, flex, uh, align items, center, justify content, center. That will center everything. We'll give it a height of like uh, 1.5 rems. Level, oh, I think we called the element score. There it is. And I want it to be a little bit bigger too. So let's do font size. We can do view view height again. We could do like five view height. Is that very big? You know, let's do 10. So we have the, an interesting thing happening here it's scrolling down below um, and for whatever reason it's doing that let's stop it really quick so our score oh our score height is not big enough for you know what let's not do height let's just do okay so it doesn't scroll anymore 
So if we make it past there, level two, oh yeah, and see it's doing that double flashing again, so we gotta reload the page. Nice. Ninety-nine is green, good enough for me. So let's bring it up off the bottom. Um, one view height. So we reload. Oh, and you know what? I think what we just need to do is say overflow hidden um, on the body. So there's no scrolling happening. Yeah, because out of the gate it was kind of like jittering down because our white line was outside of the body. So it's giving us a little bit of scroll, but then it moves up, so there's no more scroll. Cool. And then also I want to have like some little fun emoji at the beginning instead of 65. So we'll do like the mind blown emoji. So when you start, it's like mind blown, and then space bar to play. Let me go through my mock-ups here really quick. I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. No, we did the life. When the life runs out, we're good. Uh, we're keeping track of score. Um, yeah, I think, so that's everything in my mock-up. Now I wanted to kind of just go through and clean up some of the code really quick. Um, like all of this right here feels okay to me, this on key down logic. Um, the loop, it's, an inter it's interesting that the way this ended up is I'm, I'm running the loop even when it's not running, but I'm just running it one time to like make sure this stuff gets updated. Uh, but in here in this loop, there's a lot of different things happening. Um, there's two things I can see is one, we're updating UI and in another one, we're updating state. And I kind of want to separate those out. So I had this idea of just doing like uh, update UI right here and making another function called update UI. That way we can like separate out all the UI stuff. So like none of this logic right here would need to be in there. And technically it's all of that logic is just like, okay, here's all the UI updates um, from the state. And then in this function right here, we won't need any of this stuff. So now our game loop logic is really simple to see where our state's going. Like if we're running, and the current number is 100, then going up false. So we do all this normal stuff, you know, incrementing our current number. We update our state, and then we say update UI. Like we kind of like flush our changes to the DOM. It's like our own little, our own little view framework. <laughs> so and then we say, okay, if we're running, it's black. Uh, if the current otherwise, if the current number is 100, blue, green, red. Uh, make sure our life is getting updated to either the current number or death. Uh, we make sure the style of the line is doing our current height and the life width. And then inner HTML of the, of the scorecard is the level and the level that we're on. So let's see, level two. Okay. So there is one last thing that wasn't in my mockups, but is like a really important part of the game mechanic is this game technically never gets harder. Um, we, I would like it to get harder every single time that they try uh, or otherwise they can just go forever basically because it's really easy. So we can do that by manipulating the speed. Whenever they stop the game, whenever they stop on something, we're going to update the speed. And the speed that I was messing around with earlier 
is like reducing it by 15% every time. So I think, so we say like if they stop, we want to do speed equals speed times 0 0.85. And what that does is by reducing it by 15%, the set timeout is going to be a little shorter each time. Um, but we want to make sure that that math or that that speed doesn't go below 16 uh, milliseconds. Otherwise, it'll be too, it'll be faster than 60 frames per second. So we'll do math, max, speed, and we'll do 16. So it will never go below 16. Um, and that's fine because that's like really fast, 60 frames per second. So now if we do get 100%, it should be moving a little faster now, and it'll just keep getting faster. Oh, I keep getting 100. I've had a lot of practice. 98, 99, I'm good. 99, 98, 100. So maybe, maybe dropping it by 15% each time isn't enough. Maybe it needs to be a little harder. 96. 98. Yeah, see, I feel like I can get pretty far uh, without. So maybe we need to drop it a little bit faster. Maybe we need to do like 20% each time. So let's reload here. Um, okay, that's already a little faster. Okay, that's getting much faster. Ha, got some life back. 99, blue. The color cues are really nice. Yeah, I don't feel like it's getting much faster. I wonder why. Let's log out our speed. What does our speed look like when we stop? So boom, 28, 22, 17, 16. Yeah, see we're already at 16 per second. Maybe we shouldn't cap it. I mean that kind of goes against I mean, it can't be more than, it can't be more than zero or less than zero. So theoretically, it shouldn't be able to go faster than 16, but I guess that's what we need to do. So it's 28, 22, 17, 14. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay, it's much faster. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think I got to like level 25. Okay, so like that, that feels a lot better, I think. And you know what, in this case, we might even be able to get up to, might be able to do like a 8.2, you know? So, and you know, that's where, that's one of those instances where would it be better to use a request animation frame loop instead of a set timeout? Absolutely. And then instead of reducing our speed, um, like instead of making our speed faster, we would make our incrementing number uh, more but um, that would take a lot more math because we'd have end up doing a lot of rounding. Our number, since it was moving faster, we would need more, um, we would need more, uh, I guess, specificity. So we'd have to go down to the decimal on our, um, but as you can see, it's a hundred lines. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, in my mock-ups, I, I was worried about it not getting to 100. I mean, obviously, there's some styles 
right? So it's not technically 100 lines total, but 100 lines of JavaScript and our, our index.html file right there. So fun little game. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it is crazy what you can do with just regular JavaScript and HTML. And I mean, this isn't even super performant. If we were to go to a request animation frame, I mean, this thing would be bulletproof, but uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. If you guys have any questions, um, go ahead and ask them. Uh, I'll still be on the chat uh, for a minute after the video to answer any questions, or if you guys want me to answer them in person right now, go ahead. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to live stream like every morning before work. Um, or, uh, you know, at least put out something, some kind of a tweet, some tip or something like that. Mostly about React. Hopefully I'll get to do more React and hooks later. But, you know, and if, and if you like this video, uh, you can also go, um, go check me out on Patreon. So, let's see, that is right here. Patri Patreon. <laughs> I should start that. So go check me out on Patreon. Um, you can become a patron if you want, if you like my videos. Or just subscribe, tell your friends about me. Um, yeah, thanks for listening in. I will...